So my name is Andrew Weinrich, and I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about myself, share with you what I do, and I hope in 10 minutes, if you're someone who's thinking about starting a business, I can give you a roadmap to getting going. Sounds like something very ambitious to do in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, let me see if I can give you a roadmap to how to start a business. My own background is I've been building startups for the past 20 years. Starting with a company called Six Degrees, which was the very first social network, we quite literally defined the essence of a social network if we could get people to index their relationships in a single place. You could see the people you don't know through the people you do. And we built that business to become the largest community site from 96 to 2000. That company now, that company's intellectual property now serves as the backbone behind LinkedIn's intellectual property. And then over the course of the next uh, 10 years, I went on to start six other companies uh, focused on an array of different opportunities, including a mobile CRM uh, we sold to IBM and a dating company we sold to Match. And now what I do is I run a accelerator of sorts called Roadmap to Entrepreneurship. And what we're about is helping people figure out how to accelerate their businesses. But the more interesting question for me is not how do you accelerate your business, it's why is it that some people are able to start businesses and other people just talk about starting businesses? What is it that separates the entrepreneur from everyone else? And is it something that you can do? Is there, is there something you can learn if you're someone who thinks about being an entrepreneur? Is there a special sauce that you can capture? So I think of the myths of entrepreneurship. Are entrepreneurs smarter than people who aren't entrepreneurs? No. Lots of entrepreneurs I meet, I don't think are particularly smart at all, and some of them go on to do very successful things. And I also know lots of very, very intelligent people who never start a business. Do entrepreneurs have unique ideas? No, because there are no unique ideas today. It's virtually inconceivable that you can come up with a, a construct today that someone somewhere else isn't working on as well. In fact, in most cases, you're better off being the second person to start instead of the first. So what is it that makes entrepreneurs special? What is it that makes entrepreneurs people that actually begin businesses? It's nothing more than their ability to create motion when others can't. The ability to get going. I have a friend who has been talking for 20 years about starting a food delivery service. I've never met a smart person who didn't have an idea of something highly disruptive to do. This particular friend had been talking about a food delivery service well before there was a Seamless, well before there was a Delivery.com. And he always talked about why this year wasn't the year to get going, why this wasn't the right time, why he didn't have enough money in the bank, why the stars didn't align to set him up. Here are the steps you can take if you're someone who's thinking about starting a business. First of all, think big. Think disruptive. People don't invest in ideas. Ideas are not what carry the day. What carries the day are entrepreneurs that are visionaries. What makes you a visionary? Nothing more than having a perspective on a space. When you conceive of an idea, you look for it to be somewhere at the intersection of what you're passionate about and what you know, and then you engage in a massive amount of research and you form a perspective. If you're Uber, your perspective isn't simply that we can build a better taxi service. Your perspective is that there's something that doesn't make sense about regulated monopolies where you distribute medallions. There's something about the future where there will be autonomous cars and we will think about transportation differently. I call that your macro thesis. Every great company starts with a macro thesis. They start with a perspective about how things can be different than they are today. And you don't need to have a PhD to develop a perspective. You don't need to develop a, you don't need a PhD to develop a future vision that you can begin to talk about 
that is absolutely revolutionary. Now, there are entrepreneurs that come up with perspectives about the future, and then they think, well, this is very, very special. I need an NDA if I'm going to share it with anybody. For those of you who have engaged in entrepreneurship, you'll know that virtually no venture capitalist or investor signs NDAs. What separates entrepreneurs and their perspective about entrepreneurs is not that they're going to have an original idea, but that they can run faster. And so when I conceive of an idea, instead of keeping it secret, I tell everyone that I know. I share my ideas with as many people that will listen, and I listen to their objections. Not because I'm looking for people to validate my idea. If I'm truly thinking about a space that is going to look fundamentally different than it does today, most people will tell me I'm crazy. When I started Six Degrees Social Network, people said this is the dumbest idea I'd ever heard. But by listening to their ideas and their comments, it validated my own core belief in what I was doing. And so what I tell people that are flush with ideas is engage in what I would call your two-month 10-person test. Find 10 people you really, really believe in, that you value their judgment, share their idea, look for people that you might not know so well, but that are experts, maybe even people you fear would compete with you, share your idea, get their feedback, and even if all 10 say it's a stupid idea, if you believe in the idea, if you believe in where you're heading, it's a good idea. It's a good opportunity. And so you've come up with an idea, you've held on to it for some period of time, you hear from a lot of people, business plans are yesteryear, you don't need them anymore, write a business plan. Not for an investor, not for an advisor, but for yourself to make sure that you've demonstrated the discipline to ask and answer all the questions that you think might come up associated with your business. Put together cash flow projections. I've never seen cash flow projections. I see hundreds and hundreds of plans. I've never seen one that hit their cash flow projections. Do it anyway so you know that you've demonstrated to yourself the discipline of, the, of identifying the costs and what you will need to get going. And now you've thought through your idea, you're a visionary, you've got a perspective about all of the questions that are going to approach you, but I have no money. So what do I do? I have no money, I don't know any investors. I tell people there are two things you need. One is you need the staying power to go without capital for a year. Staying power can come in friends and family capital, it can come in just your willingness to eat rice aroni for a year. In my case, the first business I started I got 10 credit cards, I maxed them out. I had $100,000 in law school debt, but I had the fortitude, the certainty that I was pointed in the right direction, and so I had the year of staying power. And then the last thing you need is the 10-year commitment, because businesses are great businesses are not built overnight. They're built over a protracted period of time. Businesses don't usually look like the business plan that they started. And the winners are people that ride the highs, the lows, that are willing to iterate and pivot and stay the course. And that takes time. How much time? I tell people that if you're not willing to engage in this business and this opportunity for 10 years, this isn't the right opportunity for you. But if you are willing to engage for 10 years, if you are willing to stay the course, if you have certainty that you see something about the future and have a perspective about the future, then, then you're ready to start a business. Then you're someone who's ready to get going. And from the thousands and thousands of people that have ideas, the thousands of those who never ever start, you're still not there. There's one final step, one final step I tell people to take and I call it burning the bridge. Because you probably know a lot of people that are engaged in starting businesses that are part-time ventures. That they hire a developer and they say, I'm gonna build this prototype and once this prototype is done, I'm gonna get thousands of users and then I'm gonna be ready to get going and then I'll raise money. And the three-month project for their part-time build turns into six months, turns into 12 months. 
Turns out that new competitors arose and the initial vision requires additional development. And now we need another six months of development and the cash is light and you're working and working and you never actually get going. We know those part-time people. It's like my friend who talked about the food delivery business that 20 years later is still wondering where the massive disruption, where his opportunity lies. So there's this final construct of what I call burn the bridge. Do something. Do something that makes the path backwards irreversible. Do something. It could be quit your job. It could be raise a small amount of capital from someone you care about that you would feel incredibly guilty pulling up stakes, stopping and not continue working on this project. It could be hiring someone. It could be any one of a number of things, but you need to do something, whether it's announcing to the world on your social media, whether it's announcing to your friends and family you're done with your career. It needs to be something that makes this path certain. And if you do those things, if you are someone who is inspired to be different, to create something, to try to create your own opportunity, and you take the time to become a visionary, to construct a plan, to think about costs, to make sure that you have the staying power, however hard that is for one year, but you've got the fortitude to stay the course for 10, and then you burn the bridge, you will be in that elite cadre of people that start a business. And surprisingly, you will find that your odds of success are far more dramatic than they seem sitting on the sidelines. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>